Lewis wrote, there are two equal and opposite errors in which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve their existence. The other is to believe and feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. They themselves are equally pleased by both errors and hail a materialist or a medium with the same delight. As we conclude our study, Paul is going to focus on spiritual warfare. He is challenging us to stand in God's armor, which is Jesus, we'll see in our letter, as we do battle for the hearts and the minds of people in this world. Paul is agreeing with C.S. Lewis. You'll see that in the lesson that evil is real. The occult is a Latin word and it means to conceal. It includes astrology, fortune-telling, mysticism, magic, Wicca, Satanism, all kinds of spiritualism, all things that are flourishing in our world today. The occult promises knowledge and power that ordinary people don't possess, and the draw is magnetic. Go to a bookstore today and look at the most popular books, or look at films and television programs, and you'll see evil is real. But evil isn't equal in power to God. The battle is not a battle between two similar powers. Only God creates. Satan can't create anything. But he can pervert and he can woo people to make bad choices. We are not to live in terror of him, but we do need to exhibit a healthy respect. We need to be careful not to dabble in evil. Remember that it is designed to pull you in little by little before you know it and suddenly you're deeper in than you ever thought you would go and the consequences will be far more than you ever expected to pay. But remember that evil people can be redeemed. We see that in Acts 19 when sorcerers and witches burned the, their scrolls of their spells and turned to Christ. We realize as we look at the Ephesian letter that it was just six or seven years ago that Paul brought those people out of the occult and established a church in Ephesus. So if you find an occultist in your life, pray for them. Speak to them about the presence of Christ in your life. But don't go into Satan's territory. Instead, do battle as we're being taught here. Jesus is giving us a battle plan. Put on the armor of God, which is in Christ. Sit down in Him. Walk worthy of who you are. And stand strong when you're assaulted. Because you are in Christ. And in the end, we win. Satan loves to remind us of our past in hopes of discouraging us. But when he does that, the next time he reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. Sit, walk and stand, all in Christ. That's the how to live the Christian life gospel in a nutshell. And that's been the big message of our study of Ephesians. I hope that you will remember these three little words all your life and that it will revolutionize your living for Christ. Sit, walk, and then stand. Don't forget because in these three words, you're finding the essence and the heart of the Christian life.